President Trump is finally authorizing his team to begin the transition to a Biden administration. The General Services Administration has finally determined President-elect Joe Biden can access critical resources to begin his formal transition process. The current process is, in my view, an aberration. We haven't seen anything like it, really, to delay this the way it's been delayed seemingly needlessly. Every day is critical in a transition. There's only 78 days. What we need is full cooperation between the outgoing and the incoming for the benefit of the American people. One message that I have and I think we all share is that we want you to succeed. <laughs> From the mean and meaner tone of the campaign to the polite and cordial day after. For the next three and a half weeks, the decision of the presidency must still be made by the president. In the orderly transfer of power, we celebrate the unity that keeps us free. This idea of presidential transitions is a really odd thing we do in this country, that every four or eight years our government turns over. It's a giant startup operation where they go from zero to a thousand people in six to eight months. I really don't think there's any other organization in the country that would uh, literally replace all of the top management team over a course of a three month period. In the eyes of many in the world, this every four year ceremony we accept as normal is nothing less than a miracle. On election night in 2008, the race was called at 11 p.m. And within about two hours, I got a copy of a letter from the General Services Administration ascertaining that Senator Obama would be the president-elect and as such was entitled to the support of the federal government. It's about as formalistic, legalistic letter as you'll ever find. If you think about a transition period, it's a time of vulnerability for our country because you are you do have a transfer of power and the whole senior team is changing. We saw this with the Bush transition of power in the year 2000. They had a shortened transition because of the Bush v. Gore recount. They only had 37 days. Every day mattered, and he had a very hard time getting people in their seats in key national security positions, in key economic positions, in key healthcare positions. Subsequently, the 9-11 Commission found that the delay in the Bush team getting onboarded created a vulnerability. Now, to be clear, it didn't cause 9-11. 9-11 wouldn't have been prevented, but it was certainly not ideal from a national security perspective. It used to be that you were considered to be measuring the curtains when, you, if you even talked about transition before you were elected. And now it's understood that government is so complex that you really need to be thinking about it before the election. The Biden team has been working on it since early in the spring, and they've consistently ramped up. The president will uh, probably appoint uh, over 4,000 people. Over 1,000 of those will uh, likely require a Senate confirmation. And it's all the top people in, in the government. There's about 18 cabinet departments. But under each of those cabinet secretaries, there's another eight or 10 top management people running very large enterprises within the departments. So one of the key elements of a transition is putting together teams of individuals who go into the agencies during the transition period to learn as much as they can about what is going on in those agencies. What you really want is what's the non-public information on issues that you are going to be grappling with on day one. What are the big issues? What are the big problems? What regulations have just been issued and what are in the pipeline? I think the existence of these sort of traditional handovers, if you will, from one administration to the next, uh, these ceremonies are important because they send a signal not only throughout the country, but they send that message around the world. We see it, and the country should see it, that the people have spoken. And people around the world admire the way in which uh, one president, especially one who's been defeated, can turn over the reins of power to the other without a shot being fired. By your gracious cooperation in the transition process, you have shown a watching world that we are a united people pledged to maintaining a political system which guarantees individual liberty to a greater degree than any other. We've done transitions for 200 years during war and depression, and we've done it when 
you've had bitter adversaries on both sides who have fought a really difficult presidential campaign. There's a law called the Presidential Transition Act of 1963. We had a very close election between Richard Nixon and John Kennedy. But Nixon felt that he needed to do the right thing for the country and concede, even though he could have fought. It was much, much closer than this election. So Congress, seeing that there could be a dispute, basically wanted to create a structure and a process, a law, for the smooth transition of power. It's been amended five times since 1963, each time adjusting for things that Congress has learned. Late election night, the president was defiant, speaking at the White House after 2 a.m., falsely declaring the election was rigged, the race was over, and that he had won. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. I think what we've seen with respect to the launch of the formal transition process shows an imperfection in the law, which is the outcome of the election is clear. That's the standard that is created in the law for GSA moving forward with the transition process. Transitions are a tenuous time, uh, you know, for the U.S. government, because you, as I said, you've got all these people exiting jobs, all these new people coming in. And it really is a time where you want to make sure that you're closely synced up on national security and homeland security issues, because, you know, this is a time, frankly, that foreign adversaries will want to try to take advantage of. So the faster that a president can get his people established, the faster they can begin to carry out the mission that the president uh, and vice president we're, we're running on and we're elected to perform on. That does take time. But uh, if you let a whole year go by, you've lost 25% of your first term. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.